So let us begin anew. Remembering on both sides that civility is not a sign of weakness. And sincerity is always subject to proof. I think it's a beautiful quote. The work we're doing here in the Ellington Public Schools, the Ellington family, is timeless work. A recent study, which was covered in the Hartford Current, highlighted that 68% of students hid their political beliefs from their professors because they wanted to get a better grade. This is not healthy. We've created conditions by such that we aren't allowing our students to become the critical independent thinkers that we want. In the Ellington Public Schools, we're doing just the opposite. We recognize that things that are occurring in society are impacting what's happening in our classrooms. Families get impacted about societal issues. Children get impacted on societal issues. And what is our role as educators? Our role as educators is to take the standards of the curriculum and to have them relate in an interesting and rigorous way to what's happening in the world right now. We are in a place at the Ellington Public Schools where this is expected of us. So the, the approach has been to try to create conditions and build a culture where teachers are empowered to allow students to share their beliefs. All Ellington students are welcome to share their political beliefs in class with their fellow students, with their instructors, grounded in the seeds of civility so that civil discourse can flourish. I think three, four years ago, our teachers in many ways were not ready. They were managing and they were afraid to engage in challenging conversations for fear of people getting upset and parents being upset of what's happening in the classroom. It's why we've worked on transparency of trust. It's why we say we need to honor what parents feel about what's happening in the classroom. It's why we um, place a priority on reaching out to parents and saying, here's what we're doing. We don't have an agenda other than for your child to have a great learning experience. Parents tell me that they were um, very pleased that it's 10 o'clock at night. They're watching the debate. They're texting or Snapchatting or communicating with their friends on what their thoughts were and what their beliefs were when previously they seemed to have no idea what was going on in the world. But now they have an opinion on it and they're interacting with their friends on certain policies and certain things happening in the world. This is healthy. Can you imagine where these kids are going to be in five, 10 years? Who's gonna be running for the boards of education? Who's gonna be run, running for state reps? Who's going to be running our schools? Who's going to be writing the op-eds in the local newspaper or the national newspaper? Who is gonna be doing that? And how are they going to be approaching it? And it's going to be these children that are in our schools now, that are learning how to interact with, with each other in a challenging way, in an inquisitive way, in a way that they learn from one another, in an, at times an emotional way. But this is what we want. We want people to be able to wade through the messiness and come out working together and moving the world forward in a positive way. And what I love to believe and I, I believe is true is that there are various seeds of civility that have been planted over the last five to 10 years everywhere in their nation. They may be contextually different, but if you really look with a positive mindset, you can see examples all over this country of amazing things being born and created, amazing people of all sorts of different cultures saying, we want the same thing. We want to feel good about our fellow neighbor. We want to create and move forward and have our children have a true pursuit of happiness where they are empowered to create a better future for us. Let both sides explore what problems unite us. Instead of belaboring those problems which divide us, 